everyone, Terry Dangerfield here. This is my vlog dated January 19th, 2018. So I want to get started here and do a screencast of a data overview, as promised um, at Monday's PD, of some really positive things that are happening here in Lincoln Park um, academically. So this, this presentation is going to cover two things. First is going to be um, some recent snapshots from the parent dashboard that the Michigan Department of Education uh, just recently released. I believe it was just last week. And then I will finish up with some uh, screenshots from my school data, uh, which really highlight our how we are doing on the standardized test uh, for the state of Michigan. So we will go ahead and get started here with our data overview. And it is good news. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just highlight some areas um, that I think stand out when you look at that dashboard and areas that we should be incredibly proud of. So first I'm gonna start here with Lincoln Park Middle School. And this is a, a chart that shows how we are doing um, with our ELL population. Now all of these charts over the next several slides, they're going to highlight uh, a couple of areas. The bottom is going to be what would be considered the state average. The middle would be uh, our peer group. So these are groups, um, other school districts that have a similar demographic or maybe similar challenges as Lincoln Park. And then of course the top bar represents Lincoln Park's performance. So if you see right away, the, we should be very proud of our ELL performance and progress uh, at Lincoln Park Middle School. As you can see, we are exceeding state average with our performance. Of uh, This is the percent of English language learners who are showing progress on the WIDA test. And the WIDA test is that assessment that's used to measure um, the progress for our ELL population. Our next slide here is a uh, slide that shows the performance summary, which is again the percent of students proficient in all subjects on the state test. So this, that's a, a niche group of students. These are ones that are proficient in all subjects. And again, using the same format for the middle school, we have a state average, a peer average, and a Lincoln Park average. What I want to highlight here is you can see if you go back to 14-15, we had a 14%, then we had a 14% in 15-16, and then we have a 17% in 16-17. So we are progressing. We are starting to show higher performance at the middle school, but we're also doing that while our, while our peer group has slightly uh, taken a dip and our state average has stayed flat. That means that we are going in the right direction. We are starting to catch up. That is something for us to be proud of. Looking at our middle school again, we have an on-track attendance. This is the percent of students who have on-track attendance, which would mean that they have uh, ten, have missed 10% or less of school days per school year. For us in Lincoln Park, 180 school days, that would mean 18 or less days. That's what the state defines as on-track attendance, 18 or less days for a school year. So again, if you look at Lincoln Park Middle School in 14-15, 67%, 15-16, we had 72%, and here we are at 73%. Closing that gap in with our peer groups and closing that gap in with our state average. So our, our attendance at the middle school is getting better, and the efforts that are being put forth by our staff over there are obviously paying off. Now we'll go on to Lincoln Park High School, same stat, on-track attendance. If you see here, same kind of condition where we're seeing an improvement uh, from 14-15 to 15-16 to 16-17 with how Lincoln Park is performing. And at Lincoln Park High School, an area where they should be proud is they are now exceeding the state average when it comes to on-track uh, attendance. So we have above state average on-track attendance at Lincoln Park High School. Staying with Lincoln Park High School, uh, our English, English language learners, so our ELL progress. As you can see here, we are also performing at state average and, uh, and obviously above our significantly above our peer group. Staying at Lincoln Park High School, we have our graduation rate. Our graduation rate is, is um, above state average and as you can see has been for the last three years or at least last three cycles um, has been above the state average. And as you can see, we are getting significantly close, if not uh, statistically speaking, the same as our peer group. Moving on to Carr Elementary, this is a progress summary. So what this is is the percent of students who are making progress towards proficiency or increasing their proficiency in all subjects on the state test. This would be a way of looking at our growth. So you can see at Carr Elementary for 16-17, we actually exceeded the state average of growth of the number of students that are progressing towards becoming proficient in all subjects on the state test. Staying with CAR, we have our on-track attendance. Again, if you look here and you go through the last three years, the attendance is improving at CAR, so much so that beginning with last year, they last year were state average and this year are exceeding the state average. So again, the number of students that are missing, or, uh, missing 18 or less days per school year is reducing at uh, CAR Elementary. 
Staying with CAR, we have our English language learners. Here we have, um, again, exceeding state average with our ELL progress on the WIDA test and with, also with our peer group. At Hoover Elementary, our performance summary, this is the percent of students proficient in all subjects on state tests. You can see here a growing trend. So Hoover is increasing their performance over the last few years and also exceeding the peer group. And now here in 1617, we can say on state average for the number of students that are proficient in all subjects in state tests. That's a huge accomplishment. Congratulations, Hoover. At Foot Elementary, we have our performance summary. We can see our, um, a growth, again, from a 25 to a 27 to a 30 over the last three years. And as you can see, the state average essentially stayed flat and it has, has stayed flat. And so we are closing the gap between our performance and the state performance. And as you can also see that the peer group is essentially stayed flat, but taken maybe a tiny dip there in 16, 17, while, we are, while at Foot Elementary, we are increasing. Staying with Foot Elementary, we have our progress summary. And on this data, what I want to highlight is that Foot is exceeding the peer group of the group of schools that they are compared to. They are exceeding their peer group and moving closer, obviously, to uh, state average. Staying with Foot on our on track attendance, Foot consistently is above their peer group on on track attendance. And we are now starting to get to a point of being statistically close to our state average. Staying with Foot Elementary, we have our ELL progress, and we can see, again, another example of our uh, Foot exceeding the state average when it comes to our progress with our ELL population on the WIDA test, and obviously significantly above our peer group. Moving on to Ke Keppen Elementary with our on-track attendance. As you can see, our on-track attendance students at Keppen are uh, consistently above the peer group, those students that uh, those schools that have a like demographic. And we are getting to that point where, in fact, um, if you look even really last year, we're knocking on the door of being essentially state average. So um, great work uh, with attendance over at Keppen. Staying with Keppen, we have our ELL progress. Again, another example of us doing a wonderful job with our ELL population and having our students exceed the uh, demographic schools that we are compared to, our comparing schools, like schools, as well as right now in this example being right at state average. Here is an example at Lafayette Elementary School. Of, again, the growth summary, look at it as a growth summary, is that this is an example of Lafayette is exceeding their peer groups, the schools that they are compared to, and having students make progress towards proficiency or increasing their proficiency in all subjects on the state test. At Lafayette, staying at Lafayette, we have the on-track attendance. And as you can see here, consistently above their peer groups and um, have been uh, for the last few years knocking on the door of getting close to being state average with the number of students uh, that are on-track attendance um, at Lafayette. So we look here, this is at Max Pawn. You can see three consecutive years of exceeding the peer group um, for performance of students that are proficient in all subjects on the state tests. Staying with Pawn, we have a progress summary. And in this progress summary, this is the one where it shows again growth. And at Pawn, exceeding by uh, the peer groups by quite a bit, a significant amount, but obviously also significantly better than the state average with the amount of students that are making progress and growing towards proficiency on the state test. On track attendance at Pawn School, we stay with this same theme of we are uh, consistently uh, at or above our peer group. And as you can see here at Pawn Elementary, uh, this year with the latest, latest data from 2016, 2017, you can see it essentially statistically speaking, now at state average with the number of students that are on track attendance, getting better, 68, 77, 79, every year getting better with the attendance over at Pawn School. English learner progress over at Pawn, again, a consistent theme, continuing to uh, outpace our peer group, as well as, in this case, again, exceed state average. At Rop Elementary School, on-track attendance, as you can see here, we've had some, some highlights, including even just as recent as 15, 16, where they're at 80%, which is a statistically speaking state average. But again, another example of consistently above our peer groups and outperforming those schools that have like demographics and um, really getting, again, knocking on the door of being state average. We're now going to move on to the My School data, which shows some of the standardized testing results and how we are performing in Lincoln Park, again, on the state test. So in this case, it'll be the M step. And what you're looking at here is grades three through eight in ELA. And what I want to highlight is if you start here with 14, 15, you go to 15, 16, and then 16, 17. Well, between 15, 16, and 16, 17, of the six data points, we did have three show improvement and three that showed a slight decline. 
overall, our performance in 1617 in every single category is higher than that same performance in 1415. So academically, in English language arts, in grades three through eight as a district, we are better in every grade in, on, in terms of our performance on the M-STEP than we were two years ago. In this next chart, same thing. If you, This is now math for grades three through eight. If you look over here in 1415, then you look to 1516, and you look to 1617. Again, we of the six data points, we had four data points increase and two show a slight decline. With the exception of eighth grade math, which I will put an X through here, with the exception of that, we show an improvement in every other grade for math in comparison to where we were two years ago. Look, moving now on to science, again, this is grades uh, three through eight, but as you know, we only test fourth and seventh grade for science. And for whatever reason, my school data does not show the fourth grade content. I don't have an answer for you on that on this chart, but I will highlight the data that is shown, which is seventh grade. And it does show an area in 15, 16, and then 16, 17. You can see a significant increase there between those two years in our science performance on the M step. Here is social studies, same thing, grades three through eight, but as you know, only fifth grade and eighth grade uh, are tested in social studies. Same exact idea, 14, 15 M-STEP, 15, 16 M-STEP, and 16, 17. When you compare again, 14, 15 to 16, 17, we are in better uh, and have improved performance in both of those categories, in both of those grade levels. This is the English uh, language performance on the SAT at the high school for 11th grade, which includes the reading and writing. And if, again, if you look here at 15, 16, our performance on the, uh, the SAT, and you look at the 16, 17 performance on the SAT, we do see a significant increase there uh, between those two school years. That will conclude my data presentation of all the good things that are happening here in Lincoln Park in relation to our data. To all of you, I say thank you for these efforts. You should celebrate. We should all take a moment of pause and just really reflect on the work that we are doing and that we are finally moving the needle here in Lincoln Park, and we should be incredibly proud of that. There's still a lot of work to do, and I don't want to downplay any of that, and I think all of you know that. But at the same time, we should always reflect and take a moment and really be proud of the work that we are doing. And we are, you are, doing significantly impactful, positive work to be proud of with our students and with our community. So to Linkin Park, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you all. Have a wonderful day.